Listen now, troubles let them fade away. Brush it off like it was yesterday. When you're feeling like you're getting low, then you switch up your scenario. Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. This is a highly requested video. A lot of you all asked me to come on here and give you all give you ladies or men that are watching some Christian dating tips. Now, most of you all know that I am recently engaged and I, um, me and Aaron have been engaged since June and a lot of you all want to know some of my dating tips or how did I date as a Christian single woman. Um, I'm 29 years old and um, I do believe that I am here to help you all. So if you ask, I'm going to help you. So we're going to give you all some tips it's going to be a short, quick video to go over some Christian dating tips. Now, this is only for Christian women. Now, if you're a woman of non-belief, this video is probably not for you. This is only for women who are trying to live holy, who are trying to live the life that is pleasing unto God. This video is for you. If you're not about that life, you might want to swipe over to the next one. So this video is for women who um, see themselves as value, as holy, as Christian, who want to do better, who are trying to do better, and women who see themselves marrying a man of God. I repeat, a man of God. Stay tuned. All right, so tip number one. Now, dating can be super, super hard, right? Especially as a woman. Dating, especially now in COVID, I can only imagine now that it is like absolutely crazy. Wearing masks, you can't really be close in proximity to one another. It's kind of hard to get to know someone. But I believe with these tips I'm going to give you all that, that will help you while you're dating. Um, so first rule number one, and I think this is the most important rule. Don't ignore the red flags. Don't ignore the red flags. And when I say red flags, I'm talking about those things that you promise to yourself, that you vow to yourself, that you've made a promise to God that you would no longer go back to, that you made a promise to yourself that you would never, ever, ever do to yourself again. Now, for me, my red flag was if I see him, if I see him or if I catch him, I'm just saying him, I'm not talking directly to Aaron because obviously he passed all the tests, amen. But if I saw or see my significant other my boyfriend lying to me or cheating one time, one time, kiss him bye bye, one time. And we're talking about dating early on in the stages. And even if you've been dating for three to five years or more, if you see consecutive red flags, one, two, I see when you get to that third one, you should really run, like run as fast as you can. I'm the ginger man, gingerbread man, run as fast as you can, for real. But if you're a smart woman, run that first time, okay? Now, sometimes, come on now, let's just be realistic. Sometimes we're like, listen, we want to give him another chance. But I'm telling you, if he does it twice, don't let him fool you twice. I mean, three times, all right? Three strikes, you're out. Now, that's number one. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Don't ignore the red flags. Number two, love God first. Love God first, all right? Before you can even engage in any type of relationship with the, a, a person of the opposite sex, sex, you must love yourself. I mean, love God first. And the reason why I say that is because God loves you more than you could ever love yourself. There's a scripture in the in the NIV version that says this, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with your soul and all your mind and all your strength. That basically means put him first in every single area of your life and importantly in your relationships. I have, I, there's this saying that says, when you put God first, everything else will fall into place. So when you put God first in your relationship, you're setting the standard for, for the trajectory of your relationship. You're setting the pathway of, will this last? Or will, is this fun and games? Is this going to be, you know? And if you're a Christian woman, you're not, we don't date for fun. We date with purpose. We date with intention. We date with, 
purpose to marry. Okay, so if you know that this male or female is not marriage material, don't waste your time. That's another tip. So number one, don't ignore the red flags. Keep true to your vows and your standards and don't back down. Number two, love God first. Love God first. And I gave you an amazing scripture. That was Mark 12, verse 30. Next, number three, trust his plan. Trust his plan. There's this scripture in 1 John 5 and 14, NIV version that says this. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask for anything to court, according to his will, he hears us. Wow. The decision to put God first when it comes to navigating the complex world of dating is very important. But it's also essential to continue to trust his plan, even during changes. This means seeking God daily like in prayer, asking him to lead you and guide you toward a loving, Christian, saved, holy partner. And turning him to turning to him amid discouragement. Remember, God has a plan for you and he loves you and he, God wants the absolute best for your life. So there will be questions, but remember, turning to God to ask for peace, direction, guidance, strength is super essential in order to navigate in the dating world as a Christian woman or, or, or male. So just remember that number three, I'm sorry, number two, trust his plan. Number three, be confident in who you are. You're the bag, sis. You're the bag, bro. Be confident in you. Nobody wants to date someone who's not confident in themselves. Actually, I'm pretty sure they'll probably run away. You need to be confident in yourself. Why? Because if you're not confident in yourself, more than likely you're setting yourself up to be used and abused. And that's facts. Be confident in yourself. Know who and whose you are. Know who and why God made you. And work with what you got. Work with what you got. Listen, keeping God at the center is the first step to a successful Christian Christian um, relationship or dating life. But there are sources of choices of people that we can make sure that we have a successful dating plan. All right. There's a scripture in 1 John 2 and 16 that says this in IV version for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life comes not from the father, but from the world. So it's very important that we fix our eyes upon him and seek God for confidence. If you're if you're a woman or a male watching this or a man watching this and you are struggling with your confidence, I highly suggest that you work on your confidence first before you enter into a serious relationship uh, because it helps you to know what you're looking for. It does. It helps you know what you're looking for and it helps you know your worth. If you're confident in yourself, confident in who God made you and why God made you, then you won't back down or you won't be prey to the enemy's devices. Woo! I'm talking good. So know your worth and be confident in who you are. All right. I think I have one more tip and this is the last one. There is no such thing as too fast. There is no such thing as too fast. All right. So, you know, this is might be kind of controversial for some, but the best piece of dating advice is really that too fast is only what you make of it. And so like the judgment of a person's godliness, look for quality and not a box to check. When you're trying to assess speed of a relationship and how it's progressing, you want to look within yourself and beyond their actions as well for a sense of what's driving the heightened passion in regard, all right? You want to check yourself, all right? Is it lust or is it love? Is it godly or is it worldly, you know? 
the last and final tip that I can give you, I have a lot more, but for the video length, for the video time, I'm not going to go into detail. But if you want a part two, let me know in the comment section. The last and final Christian dating tip uh, would be to stay open to friendship and blossom into something more. I think that is super important. I think when I think about my date life and how, which is very few, <laughs> I can count on my hand how many dates that I've been on or how many, I, how many men I let into my personal world because I'm not like that. But if you have a different story than me, that's totally fine. But what I'm saying is this, stay open to friendship. Always start every date, every encounter that you have with the opposite sex as a friendship. I think with me and Aaron, that's what really made us last. And that's what really made me fall in love with him the way that I did because we are best friends and we started as friends. We literally walked through each phase. Okay, and that's what made it so beautiful. That's what makes my love story, our love story so beautiful because we started off as friends and we grew an amazing love for one another. You benefit from, you know, the non-commitment phase at first, just being friends, getting to know one another, hanging out, going on non-uptight dress-up dates, just going to Dave & Buster's or just... We're going to hang out with a group of friends. You, you come on and come bone with all of us. You know, that's how you build friendship. That's how you get to assess someone. That's how you collect data. See how they interact with other people, your other friends, before you commit fully exclusively to someone. You might feel that physical attraction, but try to keep your potential mate close to friendship because what might happen, it will blossom into something so beautiful and something that is so long lasting that will never, ever turn away from you. Um, so that's my last piece of advice. Oh, I can't. That can't be my last one. If you're a Christian woman, remain. This is the last and final tip. And I mean this. This is the last and final tip. Remain in a position of purity. This is the last and final tip. I can't leave this video without saying that remain in a position of purity if you want to please god and if you want god to bless your marriage because like i said before we date to marry put him first that's how you put god first the bible says i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service. What does that mean? This is something that we are called to do as Christians, as a service unto God. Present our bodies unto him. Give God your body. Give God your mind. Don't give your body to a boyfriend. Don't give your body to a fiance. Don't give your body to anything that is not like God. And when I say not like God, you can even give your body to things as well. Let's be for real. So outside of people, present your body as a living sacrifice. Remove all distractions. Remove all um, thoughts of impurity so that you can navigate freely while dating. Now, there will be times because the, the law of attraction that you might feel a certain way. But just remember that it might tempt you. It does not have, you do not have to act. It might tempt you, but you do not have to act. I want you to fight through that. Go through prayer and supplication and fasting. Go to God. Pray to God. Go to a, your mentor or your spiritual father and mother. My parents have helped me with that. I go to God. I write in my journal whenever I feel myself going that way I need to I pull myself in and sometimes I had to say you know hey Aaron I'm not gonna hang out tonight I'm gonna stay home with my family but there are times where I had to put a boundary there for myself so that I know I'm not I won't cut that line I won't break that border so I suggest that you create boundaries don't hang out past a certain time go on group dates if you need to this is just for different people. I'm just throwing some examples out there. Go on group dates. Um, 
Don't hang out past a certain time. If ride in the car late at night doesn't work good for you, drive separate. Now, these are all little strategies that you can use so that you can remain in a position of purity. So I hope this video helped you today. Um, my little tidbits. And if you want a part two, let me know. I can probably bring my mom and dad on here too. That'd be great. I love you all. Remember to love who you are. I'll see you on the next video.